chapter number three. I may have said four, but it's 2 Timothy chapter number three. Verse number 14, Paul speaking to Timothy. Always remember, Paul is speaking to Timothy and giving him divine instruction in the word of God. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in, G in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. <coughs> Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. I pray, God, that you bless thy word. Lord, I pray that you forgive me of my sins and my failures. God, as I stand, I pray that you'd help me rightly divide the word of truth. Lord, I pray that you'd use me as a vessel to, con to convey thy wondrous word. I pray, Father, that by the Spirit of God you'd help me say nothing contrary to thy will. All that we say would be to thy glory. Again, bless this message. Bless these people that have gathered to hear it. Give us each and ears and open minds and hearts to the Word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You say, Preacher, we're going to get tired of, of 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Well, if you get tired of, of that, then you're tired of the Word altogether because this is a verse dealing with God's Word, God's Holy Word. And I'm hoping since I've been preaching these messages that maybe you've taken into account somewhat that the Word of God is a very dear and precious book. And I, you know, I haven't got into all the ins and outs of how we came to have our Bible. I may, before this is over with, but I know that Paul thinks it very important in the life of Timothy that he know the Word of God. The Timothy's young preacher. Uh, Paul had, had mentored, men, mentored him. He had taught him. And he considered him his son in the faith. And he wanted Timothy to do well because Paul is about to leave the scene. And he's wanting someone to take over and someone to preach and carry on the gospel as Paul had preached it. And he, told, he tells him to continue in the things that thou hast learned. You know what's wrong in our country today? You know what's wrong in a lot of churches? People have forgotten where they came from, what they were, and are more concerned with now with what they can get and what they can have. Even in churches, people concern more than with a, with a social agenda than learning and, and of the teachings of the Word of God. And I don't know anything more important in this life than knowing and understanding the Word of God by the leadership of the Spirit of God. There is no problem that exists with man or with mankind or with any, you know, any government, any nation that cannot, does, cannot have the answer from the Scripture. Every problem of mankind, the answer to that problem is in the Word of God. It's in the Scripture. Now let me tell you something. If folks are living close to the Lord... And living by the word of God, the problems that do arise in their lives are much easily handled and accepted and dealt with by the word of God and their closeness to the Lord. I've been through times in my life when I didn't live up to the word of God. I didn't, I didn't let it be my guide. And guess where I've always wound up? In a, in a lot of trouble. But the word of God will guide you. It will lead you. And he's... Telling Timothy here to continue those things which we have learned. And he's challenging Timothy to live in a close relationship with the Lord. And I don't know about you, but it seems like these last days that we're living in, the devil is fighting really, really hard to keep us from living close to the Lord, close to the Savior. 
and his ways and means of getting us distracted and getting us away from the things of God and the plan of God are many. But you and I should determine our heart by God's help. We're going to maintain a close relationship to the Father. And that's what he is. My dad is, is up in years. He's 88 years old now and gets around about like a 60-year-old. And uh, he does real good and he's real healthy. And I try to spend all the time I can with my dad. But you know, if I, if I intentionally sometimes, you know, I, gotta rem- I, I make myself mental notes, got to gotta call dad, got to talk to dad today. Why? Because I desire that. Many times there are things come up and I have to work around things to talk to my daddy, but I always try to talk to my daddy two or three times a week anyway. And friend, the same is true with the Word of God. The devil will try his best to distract you from talking to the Father, from reading his Word, and he'll throw all kinds of uh, things into your life to distract you from the Word of God. Why? Because the Word of God has great wisdom. The Word of God has great teaching. The Word of God has great power. And for you as a believer, you and I, more than anything in this world, we need the power of God. We need the knowledge of the Scripture. And we see that if we have this close relationship with the Scripture and a close relationship with God, that our lives in these last days will be, will be easier to get through, will be more pleasant, We'll be more happy by design of the Word of God if we rely upon Him. And I'm telling you, if I never did pick up nothing but the newspaper, which ain't none of them worth reading anymore hardly, but if I never picked up any of them or listened to any news, you know, and, and all I did was uh, read that and all I did was listen to the news and, and uh, never considered the good things of God, well, I'd be walking my head down all the time. But I know that there's a God in heaven that's got all of this right in his hand. I don't care what you hear on the news. I don't care what blows up in the world. (coughs) Who fires the first nuclear round? I'm telling you, it's bound to happen. Sooner or later, it's bound to happen. And I don't care who does any of that. I know God's got it in control, and he knows what, when, how, who, and how he's going to take care of us. God knows that. So you need not be disturbed, my friend, by all the distraction of the, of the things of the world. But you and I, as believers together, we ought to determine in our heart that we're going to develop a very close relationship with the Scripture, with the Word of God. Now, if, you, if you're new to the Bible, if you're new to the study of the Scripture, I would encourage you to read the the Gospel of John, which I have listed this month, the book of Romans, the book of Proverbs, the book of uh, 1 John. I'd encourage you to read those first. Then after reading those, I would encourage you to study the doctrines of the Scripture, the the doctrine of the Father, the doctrine of God the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, the doctrine of Jesus Christ, the doctrine of salvation, all of these doctrines, there are ten major doctrines in the Scripture, uh, the doctrine of last things. You should study those doctrines. You can get good doctrine books in in a lot of places or outlines or I can help you. But you need to study the doctrines. You say, preacher, those are not real exciting. Let me tell you something. The doctrines of the Scripture are like the foundation of a house. Working on a house down in uh, South Carolina, fixing up the hunt out of them, and uh, looking pretty good. But apparently when they laid the foundation of that house, they didn't do a real good job. They had went around, and I don't know if there was ever any footers poured or what. I don't, I don't know the, I, I didn't live that many years ago, and I wasn't there, so I don't know what they did exactly. But it appears that they put a run of blocks around the square that pretty well, they pretty well got that right. 
And then they poured concrete in the middle of those blocks without any foundation, without anything, it appears. Now, I don't know that it did that. It may be just all the years that it went by. But that's what it looks like because now the concrete slab is sunk about that far down below the blocks. And I know they were level. You can tell they were level at one time. You know why? Because there wasn't a good foundation. There might have been, but it wasn't very good because it settled that much. Let me tell you something. The doctrine of the Scripture <coughs> is like that foundation. If you have a good foundation in the Word of God and you know what God, who God is, you know who the Spirit of God is, you know who Jesus Christ is, you know the study of eschatology or the study of last things, you know what's going to happen in the end. Friend, that'll build, that'll let you build as a believer better on a better foundation than anything else. What's wrong with a lot of Christians today? They don't have no foundation under them. That's why when the first wind of another doctrine comes along, they're blown right off and they'll be carried away to another doctrine or to another teacher or something that, that is more likely to tickle their ears than it is to touch their heart. But the Word of God, rightly divided, will pierce the heart. Remember? Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing, the dividing the sunder of soul and spirit and the joints of the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That is the word of God, my friend. That's what it will do. And Paul, instructing Timothy, says that he should have a great relationship with the word of God. God wants it to be such in our lives that when a problem comes along, we have an answer from the Scripture. We have a divine answer from the Word of God as to how to deal with our problems of life. You worry about tomorrow, the Bible says, fret not for tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. Are we worried about anything? By, you know, the Bible teaches that their worry is lack of faith in Him. And I don't know anybody that doesn't worry. I've known a few people that said they didn't ever worry. And you know what? I worry about them. <laughs> you get that in a few minutes. But many people, and I'm sure some people worry less than others. But all of us, and we sometimes turn it from worry to deep concern, but we're still worried about others. I know Brother David back there this morning. I know he's sitting there and I'm preaching and he's thinking about his wife at home, wondering if she's okay. She'll be all right, Brother David. Amen. They're going to help her. Well, I believe she's got some help coming. Amen. I've been praying. Lord, send some help. And these others that are sick, you may think, well, you know, uh, you worry about them and, you, and you're concerned about them. But let me tell you something. God made us. God put us together. And God can help us. But he, he establishes his word in us that we might be greater than ever before as a child of God. And that in these days we live in, we might be strong in the faith. And Paul is telling Timothy to be strong in the faith. Continue in the things which thou hast learned from a child. Evidently his mom and his grandma, and I'm not going to get into to all of that, but evidently they trained him right as a believer. They trained him right as a young child, and he remembered the teachings of, of, his, of his mother and his grandmother. And these prisoners we had here, inmates we had here last Sunday, and I heard the one testify, he said, you can't get away from grandma, mom and grandma's prayers. Amen. I've had them, I've been in prison, visiting in prison before. I've been there before, and people tell me I just couldn't get away from mom and grandma's prayers. Inside those prison walls, they had gotten right with God, but they still had to serve their sentence to man. And they tell me I did, just could never get away from mom and grandma praying. Listen, mom and dad, pray for your young ones, train them up in the way they should go. Teach them the Word of God. Teach them the Scripture. Now we begin to think about the Word of God and how we're, going, how we're to grow in the Word of God. And then I begin to think, why did God feel the need to give us His Word? God's God. Beside Him, there's none else. 
God always has been. God always will be. But he put us on here. He created us out of the dust of the earth. Gave his dear son to die on the cross for us that we might have life. Well, I'll tell you, one reason God gave us his word would be, would be so that we would know how we got here. We would know that we were sinners and we would know how to be saved. Without the word of God, we'd be able to determine none of that. I have, I have great foundation teaching from the scripture on how man got here. In the beginning, God, that's all I need. I'm not going to debate the crowd that thinks they came from monkeys or whatever it was they come from, amoeba, and down in a little, you know, I grew something in a jar one time. And the teacher said, go do this and it'll produce something. Well, you know, I've got sense enough to know now that I didn't create anything. It was just what was in the water in my house. And I went out and I went out in my house and, and, uh, I got a little glass of water, a little jar, a little jar, probably a mayonnaise jar. Anybody ever use mayonnaise jars when you're growing up? Do you ever can in mayonnaise jars? Everybody, you ain't supposed to do that, preacher. It always worked that well for us. Canning jars got quite expensive. Especially had a kid who wanted to sit around and shoot him with a BB gun. And so we'd use the mayonnaise jars or, or JFG coffee jars. You remember them? Them lids would fit on them good anyway. But I grabbed me one of them out of somewhere, probably shouldn't have done it, but I did. And I took it down the creek behind the house. You know what I'm talking about, sister. And I got me, no, I didn't either. I went down to the pond because it said to get pond water. I went down to the pond on the side of the road and got me some pond water. And I brought it in there and I put, she said, put five grains of rice in it. So I put five grains of rice set and set it in a dark place. I set it in a dark place. I forgot about it. Little boys do. I was other things on my mind and remember that. So finally one day, I guess what, I got it out and looked at it and lo and behold, there was things swimming around in there and I didn't put them in there. Now, I don't know what it was. It was something that come out of that water. It's something I scooped up in that water and I just fed them with that rice and those little bitty things about that long. I mean, they was just getting it. And I thought to myself, you know, and I had sense enough to know at that age, I wasn't over 8 or 10 years old, I had sense enough at that age to know that that was something in the water that I had not created anything. But there's people today that believe, would say, well, you created that. I didn't create nothing. I just put some, fed some little germs in there, a little bacteria or, or whatever it was, and they come along. Now, as a, as a young, and listen to me now, as a young and being taught the scripture of how God, I remember, I'm, I'm running rabbits, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach you something here today. As a kid, I remember the, the posters on the wall of how a man started out in the pond with a tail, and he wound up through an ape and wound up to a man. Do they still, I'm sure they still got them on the walls of the school. They don't? Well, I was a pioneer in that, wasn't I? But I'll never forget, as long as I live, they had a picture of an ocean or a, and, and there was a little thing crawling out on the ground that had a tail. And the next scene it showed it without the tail. And the next scene it showed it on all fours. And the next scene, I mean, you came right up just trying their best. But I knew because of my teaching from my mama and my daddy and my grandma that there was no way that I come out of that hole of water. That never, I, ne I was never one time tempted to believe that I got here this way. Now, there are some folks in the world, I wonder if that ain't the way they got here. But I know that I didn't. And if that were the case, then the, the Word of God teaches me that in the beginning, I told you I'd take you back around where this rabbit goes in the hole. The Word of God tells me that we are created by Him, that God breathes a man into his nostrils the breath of life, and God gave man the, the, the way of, of, of creating and himself procreating, and that's how we're here today. Now, if that were not the fact, if that were not the truth, out of the word of God, we'd still see little things crawling out of the ocean. We'd still doing the same thing, and the process of evolution would still be going on, and man, would, but we, you and I would be something different than we were besides old. We'd be looking something different than we did 40 years ago. 
That's all nonsense. If, listen, if you're being taught that in school, it's nonsense. And if you get in trouble for telling the teacher it's nonsense, which, you know, that's all up to you, you tell them, come tell me, I'll tell them it's nonsense. And mom and daddy will tell them it's nonsense. Why? Because we have the foundational teaching in the Word of God, and God saw the reason in the Word of God to give us the Scripture so that we would know how we got here. That rabbit come back home, did he? We have the reason to know how we got here by the Word of God. The purpose of the Word of God is to reveal to us what He wants us to know about Him. The divine Scripture is, is His revelation to us. Now, how did He, how did God, now I'm going to quit here in just a minute because i got way too much to cover to get in today. <coughs> But how did God choose to get his word to us? By the prophet process of revelation. Now many folks think of revelation as the book of revelation, which it is. It's a revelation of last things that are going to happen. That's why it's called the revelation, because it reveals to us the last things. The book of Genesis reveals to us the first things. The book of, uh, the, the, book of the, the uh, Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy reveal to us the, the, the first acts of man. Then the historical books reveal to us the history of man. And then the poetic books of the scripture reveal to us uh, the teachings and the things we can learn through the pro Psalms and through the, the Proverbs. And all of those things. And then the prophetical Old Testament scripture revealed to us many things of the New Testament. So it all works together. So God chose by the writing of man to reveal to himself his own word. Now think about that. God decided, or it was in God's plan, God has never decided anything. Because nothing's ever occurred to God. He's never, nothing he's never decided. God in his infinite, you say, I don't understand that. Preacher. I don't either, and I'm not going to try to explain it to you, but I know God is, and always has been, always will be, and he's got everything all planned out from what we know as the beginning. But God in his greatness and God in his wonder and God in his all knowledge said, I must tell men how to live. I must tell them how they got there. So how, am I, how will I do that? God answered if we ask, I'll use man to reveal me to the world. I'll use many different men to reveal. So he used Moses to reveal to us the Old Testament, first five books of the, of the Bible. He used 40 different men to reveal to us his word over a period of uh, 1,500 years. But God chose that way to reveal himself to us is through the writing of man. But it wasn't left, it wasn't left up to man to write down what he wanted to write. It was They were inspired. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. I want, you to, I want that to be embedded in every heart in here, every mind in here, that the scripture was inspired by the Holy Ghost of God. It was given to man, and man was given the words to write. And, and, and the great big God of heaven, he held, the best way I know how to tell you, is that God held the man's hand that held the pen, and he pinned down the word of God. Whoopee! Hey Amen. I'm glad I like that. Thinking that a God that loved me and the God that loved you would give us his very word would give us his very word that we know exactly what God wants us to know about himself, what God wants us to know about the things of him. Oh, thank God and the Lamb forever. I'm glad for the word of God. I praise him. Without his word, I'd be on my way to hell. Without his word, you'd be on your way to hell today because in the word of God is revealed to us the plan of salvation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Friend, let me ask you something here today. Do you know you're born again? I've introduced you a message that I want to preach to you. But all I do is introduce it to you today. I, 
if I, I, it'll take me another hour to preach the, the word of God as God's given to me today. But I want you to know that you need to know that God reveals himself to you through the scripture. And this ought to be the most blessed, precious thing that you pick up and read is the word of God. I try to read it before anything else of the day. I try to read the scripture. It might not be, it might not be ten chapters. It might not be one chapter. But Lord, let me begin thy day with some verses from the scripture and it will encourage my heart and it does. Young folks, I want to challenge you to read the Bible. If you're old enough to read, amen, read the Bible. You may be given a hundred things to read in school, but be sure in all of that you read the scripture. You read what God says, not what man says. But what God says, this is what God, how can I ever explain it to you? How can I get it out of my heart? How can I get it out to you that this, the word of God, is the most important thing in your life? This is what the, the creator, the one that made you, this is what he said. Read it. Love it. And live it. By his help. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God today. Oh, dear God, I beg you to make it more precious to us than it ever has. And God, as we continue preaching this, these thoughts, Lord, I pray that the people of God will begin to enjoy the word of God more than they ever have. God, may we heap it upon us. And God, may we be challenged by it. And God, may we learn by it. And God, may we live closer to you through it. Lord, someone here today that may have never accepted you as their Savior, God, the only way they'll ever get to heaven, Father, is through the Word of God, through thy plan and thy plan only. So we pray right now, God, should be someone be here lost today. I pray the sweet spirit of conviction of the Holy Ghost of God will move on them. Save them today by your grace. Should there be a child of God here this morning that's discouraged and down and out and or maybe they just feel like just not just quitting and not going on. For the glory of God, I pray that you'd encourage them today. And Lord, the word of God will do just that. Help us now, we pray in Jesus' name. While every head's bowed, no one looking around. Just a quick question for you today. How many of you here, without a doubt, there's no doubt in your mind right now that if your heart quits beating, you're going to go to heaven. Would you slip up your hand?